Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a Germany exclusive from Glen Allachy. This is a single cask Madeira Barrique. 59.5% ABV. We have 14 years of age. It was actually distilled on the 15th of May 2009, bottled in June of 2023. Whiskey base number 239615. Can't read. And the recommended retail price was 124 euros and 90 cents. Um, this was actually introduced to the German market in October of 2023. At the moment, the price is 118 euros. This is the cheapest I can find online. So it's not the massively hyped, quickly sold out bottle. What am I going to compare it to? Well, I'm going to compare it to another Glen Allachy single cast Germany exclusive. This time it's going to be a Pedro Jimenez PX Punchin. This has 62.1% ABV. Wow. And we have here 688 bottles. So a punchin is much bigger than a barrique. So we have here 688 bottles. Um, whiskey base 246200. Here we have um, 274 bottles. If you just look at the color. Yeah, you see Pedro Jimenez, you see Madeira. Now, Madeira I love. Have I said that I really like Madeira? Uh, Madeira is one of the products that I, if, if at all possible, go to your local wine store, say, hey, I have no idea, give me a good Madeira, maybe a little bit of a sweet Madeira, and they will probably be able to give you a bottle there. Um, 25, 30 euros, 30 dollars is what you might have to pay for it. Um, I like the Malvasia. Malvasia is maybe the sweetest of the, um, the types of Madeira, just like port, just like, um, sherry. It's a fortified wine. You take a normal wine in the Madeira region island of Portugal, and then you actually add, um, uh, neutral spirits to it brandy it has to, it can't be made from grain it has to be made from grapes and so you take that neutral spirit made from grapes called brandy and you actually fortify the wine which means you add alcohol to it you leave the sugars in there so the, the yeast does not actually eat up all of the, the sweetness it could be a boal um, also b-o-a-l just like b-u-a-l um, that's the different types of the uh, grape varietals you can have there you can also have the Vea Dayo, um, or you could have the uh, Cecil. Um, that's a little bit of the drier one. All right. So in America, you have the um, Cojita or the Harvest, and sometimes you have a reserve or a special reserve or extra reserve or a vintage or fra, Frasquiria. Wow, I'm not very good. Or in America, the largest selling style of uh, Madeira in the U.S. is called Rainwater. Didn't know that. So um, it's a inexpensive, medium dry style of wine made entirely from a Tinta Negra grapes and aged for three years, including a period in a um, estufa. But it's very, very, um, ah, who knows, who knows. Try a bottle um, a Madeira, okay? So what I have here is I'm flexing a little bit. I have two single casks. This over here, um, the PX with 11 years is going to be a 109. This is going to be, I'd just say 119 for the 14 year old and 62.1 versus 59.5. These are interesting, interesting bottles. I think a Billy Walker has like 50,000 barrels. That's amazing. Um, that's a lot of barrels to be working with and to know and to put on the different markets. And every single barrel usually gets this nice little packaging. It is cardboard, which I like. And you do have the feeling of a little bit of a suede in here, but it's more of a plastic type of inside of velvet. Um, it's okay. Um, and they just put this label on here, just like the same label that's on the front of here. And um, yes, it's there. We can try it. Here we have the QR, we have the, the barcode, so you can put it over your nice little um, 
scanner and so on. The same thing happens here. The bottom you have the barcode, the box you have. I'm sure Billy Walker has, I'm going to say tens of thousands of these boxes in storage. And every time there's a single barrel, boom for the world, wherever they're made like that. So the bottles are very, just a standard Glenarachy bottle. Um, very, very nice. The question was, I always forget here, um, 2017 is when Billy Walker bought then um, Glen Allergy from Pernod Ricard. And um, in this year's book, um, there was an interesting little tidbit in here that I just want to share with you, which I kind of really liked. Um, it says here, um, in 1989, Glen Allergy became the third Scotch whiskey malt distillery following Ab Abalauer in 1974 and Edredauer in 1982 that a Pinot Ricard acquired and the ownership lasted of Glen Anarchy for 28 years. Um, Ed Lidauer was sold over to um, basically now a signature vintage and Billy Walker bought this distillery 2017. But this is the interesting part. In the last 18 years, Pinot Ricard has sold five of their distilleries with a combined capacity of 19 million liters of single malt. On the other hand, expansion of some of their remaining sites have added 26 million liters, with, and within a couple of years, another 14 million will be created at uh, Milton Duff and Abalauer. And the company is determined to remain in the second largest, um, at least in Scotland, producer of single malt whiskey. Diageo, on the other hand, with a whiskey background dating, all, dating back, back all the way to 1877, has not sold a single distillery in, um, since 1998. And 1988, they were forced by the authorities in order to prefer, preserve competition in the industry to sell one of their distilleries. I forgot which one it was. Anyone know? Um, that was part of the um, cartel um, settlement that they had there. So, um, interesting, interesting. So, Diageo keeps on doing things, and Pinot Ricard at the moment is expanding the ones they like, but selling the ones uh, for some reason that they want to sell. And we can be very thankful that Billy Walker back then was able to buy the Glen Allergy distillery with all the casks, with the distilling equipment. They have a capacity, Glen Allergy, of 4 million liters, and 2023, they produced less than a million. So they're at a, a quarter of what they used to produce just seven years ago. All right, so let's try these on the nose. The Madeira is heavenly divine. I love this nose. This is an A nose. Alcohol, nothing. It is 59.5%, but I just love the Madeira nose. Ah, beautiful. Going over to the Pedro Jimenez Punchin. This is sherry, but it's not evident on the very first nosing Pedro Jimenez PX. Usually Pedro Jimenez PX is going to be, for me, raisins. It's going to be a little bit of dark prunes. It's going to be very dark, sherry, dark fruit moment. Even a dark, dark plum. I have a little bit of a herbal herbacity going on here, herbalness. Um, there's a little bit like oregano, oregano, I'm sorry, okay, oregano in here. There's a little bit even of, and sorry for saying this, almost like a um, Jägermeister, the German um, herbal liqueur, or even the, the Italian, like an Italian herbal liqueur. Yes, it is Pedro Jimenez, but there's a little bit of a tangent going on in there. Which one would I prefer every single day of the week? The Madeira, but I love Madeira. Have I mentioned I really do like good Madeiras? Um, the wines as well as the products that are finished or matured in the cast. My question of the day already. What Madeira cask finished, cask matured, whiskey... It can be from Scotland, Ireland, the world, wherever. Can you recommend? What great Madeira whiskies are there out there? Madeira finished, Madeira matured. Um, try to recommend something with more than 46%. Try to recommend something under 100 and 120 euros if possible. It can be single cask. It can be um, cast strength. I don't care. What is your recommendation? I enjoy 
Madeira. I say Pedro Jimenez makes everything better, but <laughs> in my opinion, Madeira makes almost everything great. So let's try these 59.5%. It's a lot, um, but it should be doable. The 62.1 is even more. We'll get to that in a second. Cilantro. Mm. 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 This is so hot. Oh, wow. <clears throat> this takes away, I'm going to use the word a lot of my enjoyment of this whiskey, the heat. My theory is, I might be totally wrong. All right? I don't think Pinot Ricard back in 2009 actually took a Madeira Barrique and put this whiskey in it and just left it there. I think this is, and I might be wrong, this is conspiracy, this is my hypothesis, this is a theory. My theory is Billy Walker, six, seven years ago, he re-racked this, he refilled this into something else. Um, I feel that this whiskey has been eight years, maybe even ten years of age, in very quiet, I'm going to use the word that Roy from Aquavita often uses, distillery wood. Distillery wood means it's not a first fill bourbon, it's not a second fill bourbon, it's not a third fill bourbon. The distillery just has casks laying around and we just refill them with something because we are too cheap and too not willing to go buy new wood. And just like a tea bag, the first time you use it you get a lot, the second time you get some, the third time you get little, the fourth time you get hardly anything, and the fifth time nothing. America's the first, and so the second would be first fill bourbon, second fill bourbon, third for, third for, third fill bourbon, and then refill, and then distillery wood, the fifth time. And um, I think this was in distillery wood. Distillery wood can be third, fourth, or fifth use, use all right? Um, but <laughs> they did put it in an interesting Madeira cask, but the heat is just so... Uh, just distracting, all right? So I'm not the wuss. I, I'm going to drink the 62.1% in a moment. It's just going to be fine. It's not me. It's the whiskey in this case. And just to prove this, I added some water. I'm dilute, diluting it down from 59.5%, about to 50%. I did this in my first video um, in German, and um, I diluted it down to about 43%. At the end, it was good. It was still a little hot. Going to put it down to about 50% here and see what happens. Mm. Mm. I'm about 48%. There's still heat. There's still that, that sharpness, the heat, the alcoholic bite. Um, at the beginning, there's a wonderful Madeira note. Alcohol, alcohol. Oh, yeah. Now we have the wonderful Madeira flavorfulness. Um, this is a C to C plus whiskey despite the heat. Without water it's a C minus, with water it's a C plus. Um, but I would have preferred a whiskey without that hotness of the whiskey, of the alcohol sharpness. Value for money, it's a D plus. It's, a, it's it's not even a C minus. This is not something I can recommend to a normal person. If you are a Glen Alecky disciple, if you love Madeira like I do, this might be your thing with water. Maybe you're less sensitive than am I to the alcohol heat. Maybe you like it that way. I am disappointed. I had hoped to have a beautiful, excellent whiskey. I get a good whiskey with water added from whiskey jason here it is a germany exclusive um we used to say in germany if anything's a germany exclusive it probably has sulfur in it they know germans like or can't detect sulfur as much at the moment i sometimes think glen Arachy sends off some of the hotter casks to germany might be wrong who knows all right as a direct comparison to pedro Jimenez, there will be a separate video about this um i will compare it i think to a deanston uh, Pedro Jimenez as well from Best Rams. PX is great, but it basically just 
bulldozers any type of distillery ca character. This could be a Deanston, this could be a um, Glen Arachy, this could be a Glen Cadam, this could be a Balblea, this could be 15 other um, Tulibadin, maybe. This could be so many other distilleries and I would not be able to detect ever the distillery character due to the dominant, over-dominant presence of the Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Jimenez makes everything better, but it makes almost everything almost at the same playing field. I don't know if you have, if you speak different languages. Um, I speak German, I speak English, and every once in a while you have a, a film, let's say an American, uh, an American film where you have a British actor, and the British actor, his accent, his dialect, his um, intonation of the words is different and adds a certain amount of um, flavor to the script. And you might have someone from maybe the Italian Mafia in there, and you have someone maybe from Kentucky in there, and you have all these different nuances. Now, if you go to a synchronized film where the people are speaking German, often they don't translate accents. Everyone speaks high German. And you lose so much of the film's depth. Um, the mafia boss speaks just normal, just like the guy from Italy, I'm sorry, just like the guy from England or the guy from Kentucky. And you just lose all, you lose so much. And that's what happens with Pedro Jimenez. It just poof, makes everything almost the same. It's good the same, but everything the same. So 62.1%. Hmm. This is an 11 year old product. How old does, I'm sorry, how high was the barrel entry proof of this? It was not 64.5% the industry standard. Glen Anarchy, I've had whiskeys with 66, 68% from Glen Anarchy that are eight years old. They do 68, they do 70, they go all the way up to even 72% and fill the casks up with that. And I'm going to assume that this is a 68, maybe even a 70% um, barrel entry proof and over 11 years has dropped down to 62.1. Alcohol, no problem. Very, very nice. Very good. Very Pedro Jimenez goodness. Would I buy this instead? Would I still want to buy this because I love Madeira? Tell me a good Madeira cask um, finish or cask maturation that I can buy instead. That would be my desire. So as I said, um, with water, C+, plus. without water, C-, minus. Um, value for money is a D+. Plus. This is only something available in Germany and only something for the, I'm going to call it the disciples of Billy Walker of um, Glenn Alaghi. Or people that just love, love the Madeira uh, cask finish influence or the cask influence and are less sensitive to the high alcohol sharpness that I am. Even after the 62.1%, this with water diluted down to what, 50 some percent. Um, it's got a great, great finish. It is a C plus with water might be even a B minus. All right, so Whiskey Jason here, flexing a little bit with two different single casks, um, bottlings for Germany, 62.1%, 59.5%, 11 years old, 14 years old, 109 euros, 119 euros. What is your favorite Glen Adachy product if you can't answer the Madeira cask finish question? Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, telling others about this crazy guy over in Germany tasting often rare and exotic, uh, exotic whiskeys. Bye-bye.